everyone, I'm Will Fuller from EvisionSelfHealing.com and we're dedicated in helping you improve your eyesight and quality of life by taking healing into your own hands. And in this video I'm going to be looking at the art of not seeing. Now some of you may have heard of the Orderless Huxley book, The Art of Seeing, and certainly this is uh, in respective of that book. And it, the, the book itself is really one of the great vision improvement books that gives you a good insight in how positive visual habits are really important for vision improvement. Aldous Huxley was an author who um, improved his own eyesight and really felt that he needed to write about it and share the method with everybody else. So the art of not seeing then is a, sort of a prequel, if you will, to the art of seeing. And it's more about how in our daily lives we're really just not tuning in to our true vision, which is allowing our vision to suffer and for your vision to be not as good as it could be. Now, the first part um, in this series that we're going to be looking at is peripheral vision. Now, most of you that have seen my blogs should know pretty well now about peripheral vision and how it functions, but for those of you that haven't, Peripheral vision is what we see in the world around us. Our central vision only makes up around 3% of our overall visual field. And um, say as you look at me now, and say you look at my eye, it's probably around the size of my eye. I guess that kind of depends on what size screen you're watching this on. So uh, probably a better example would be if you're reading a book, then the word the is about the size of your central vision. And the rest then is your periphery. Now the periphery are made up of what we call rod cells. And these cells are responsible for functioning to movement and they also function in low levels of light. In fact, they can function in only around one photon of light. So very sensitive to uh, very low levels there, which enable us to see in the dark. Now the movement that it picks up is obviously uh, very helpful, otherwise we wouldn't know things were moving. So uh, anything that you use in your daily life that involves being uh, able to use that function is the rod cells. Now the cone cells on the other hand is found in the central vision and there you have red, green and blue cells that respond to the different wavelengths of light. And there's only around 6 million of those cone cells and that's what's responsible for the detailed and colour vision that you have. So there's a contrast there, um, colour versus movement and low levels of light. Now the cone cells respond best in bright light, ideally in sunlight where it's around 10,000 watts of light. Now the comparison then, the cones have 6 million cells whereas the rods, there's 120 million of them in each eye. So you can really tell that vision is heavily weighted over to peripheral vision. Now if you take an animal like cats, then they are even more heavily weighted in that way. So their vision, their central vision isn't as good as ours. They don't see as clear as we do, but they've got more rod cells. They've got more peripheral cells. So that means they see better at night. And it also means that they're gonna see better movement which is why I guess they're good hunting animals. Now, you can tell then that vision is heavily weighted over to one side, but if you think about our everyday lives, we really mainly focus on our central vision. And if you think over the last 150 years, where literacy has really um, been made such a more important role in our lives, and that is what sees the detail, that's what we read with, with that central vision, so over the years, uh, we've really heavily weighted the percentage of where we're using our eyesight in the central vision. Now, if you look at the last 20, 30 years with all this great technology that we're uh, experiencing, this, this big boom in the internet and uh, smartphones and all the rest of it, we are now overusing our central vision really that much more. And we don't need to pay attention to the world around us. If you think of it, if you're playing uh, Angry Birds on your phone, uh, on your iPhone or whatever phone, then it doesn't matter what's going on around you or what the person's saying or doing to the left or right. The only thing that you're interested in is uh, focusing on the thing that's right in front of you, firing some birds over it, um, some bits of wood and trying to kill some pigs. So 
the world around you just doesn't matter. So it means that our brain and everything else is focused just on the central vision and it means that we switch off from our periphery. Now over time this becomes habitual and it means that in our everyday lives we're really not seeing the world around us. Now obviously for a lot of us um, you're still using it with things like walking down the road and uh, say so if you cross the road obviously it's a very important part of your vision to know whether cars are coming or not although they do say to look left and right which is your central vision so um, it's difficult for someone like myself because I have retinitis pigmentosa which means that I'm not used to having that periphery and even though it's starting to wake up slowly I'm still not uh, used to fully using it in order to pick up the world around me. But I would imagine for the majority of people, you're still using your periphery on a basal level on a day-to-day -day basis, but you're not using it as much as we used to do. If you think about when you're out, um, not when you're out hunting and gathering, but uh, when our ancestors used to go out hunting and gathering, peripheral vision was such an essential role in survival. It really is the difference between, uh, between being alive or dead. Um, if you think about somebody going through the jungle, and if you're only looking through this central piece, um, this, this very small central field, and you're ignoring your periphery, well, it wouldn't take long for a predator to come out from the side and have you for lunch or dinner, depending on the time of day, or maybe even breakfast. So also we maybe have never have, uh, been able to eat as well uh, because it's something that's very important in hunting for you to be able to pick up the movement and everything around in your periphery. Now, uh, of course we've advanced now and very few of us need to go hunting for our food, um, depending on what supermarket you go to. But it's still a necessity in our vision and one reason why it's very important to be using our peripheral vision as much as we used to, or indeed um, the fact that we're ignoring it and we're not using it as much, means that there's an imbalance in our eye. So it means that we're overusing our central vision and we're underusing our peripheral vision and it creates an imbalance. And this causes, this causes stress and strain in the eyes and this is um, a condition that is becoming very common in our modern day society is this eye strain, the headaches, the dry eyes, the itchy eyes. All of this is uh, mainly because of the strain that we're putting our eyes under and part of that is this unbalance that we're creating through this uh, underusing the peripheral vision and overusing our central vision. It also uh, could potentially lead to other more stressful conditions as you're putting the eyes under more stress and strain, things like glaucoma, which is increased pressure in the eye. If you think you're building that strain up, then the pressure can increase and that can just have an effect on the eye. So it's important that we try and keep this balance between the two. Now, I'm not asking you to give up uh, your iPhone or the computer, or certainly we know a lot of time if you're sitting working, trying to get something done, if you're paying attention to the world around you, then it's very difficult to get that done. Sometimes you could argue that daydreamers um, are probably gonna be the ones with better vision than those that are really focusing because it means they're gonna have that more equal balance. But that's not an excuse uh, to not study. If you're, if you're somebody who's still studying and you're watching this, that's not an excuse. But it means that you need to be able to work positive habits into your life so that you can still concentrate, get your work done, but should be tuned into the world around you. So just a little bit of information there on how we're overusing our central vision and underusing our periphery and how indeed it is very important for you to try and keep a balance between the two. One way is if you're not um, incorporating it into your life is to also do the peripheral vision eye exercise. Uh, you can find that in the eye exercise tab on our website at envisionselfhealing.com and that's basically blocking the central vision and stimulating the periphery. And that's just a way of resting the central vision and stimulating the periphery, um, which is a great rest during the day and also a very good study rest, or if you're using your computer uh, quite frequently, then that's an excellent thing to give yourself uh, a little break from the strain and you should definitely feel some rest in your eyes when you do that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you were able to absorb some of the information on how we are creating an imbalance in our eyes and how in fact we are achieving the art of not seeing 
and that it can actually have a bad effect on our vision and that really we want to be thinking about bringing that balance back so that we can start using our peripheral vision again and start resting our central vision to really help rest the eyes, reduce strain and of course improve your eyesight. Now if you enjoyed uh, the information on this video you can also find a lot of great tips on uh, very similar things like that in our free ebook which is called a modern day guide for improving eyesight and just head over to our website at envisionselfhealing.com and you'll find the book over there where we divide the eye up into 10 different sections so we can easily explain to you really how a vision is being affected by our modern day lives and indeed how we can improve it. It's not all doom and gloom, uh, otherwise we wouldn't bother be doing this. There's got to be some good news, otherwise uh, no one would uh, listen. So you can also get some great tips uh, on my Twitter account, William Fuller EN, and I regularly update some tips there on how you can improve your eyesight. So you can follow me over there on Twitter. You can also look me up on Facebook, William Fuller Envision, and indeed head over to the Envision Self Healing Facebook fan page. Like us over there, and you can get some, uh, get some great information, some questions that people are also asking through the Facebook fan page, and some pictures, etc., on how Richard and I are getting on with our vision, and also how we are pushing our work forward. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, and uh, get all the latest videos that we release regularly at EnvisionSelfHealing.com. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and happy healing!